all cases, there's big anonymous money behind various lanes of activity. One lane of activity is through the conduit of the Federalist Society. It's taken over the selection of judicial nominees. All the same funders over and over again, bringing the cases and providing this orchestrated, orchestrated chorus of amici. So let's go on to Roe v. Wade. <clears throat> same thing. You're killing me, Smalls. This video is brought to you by Extreme Tees. Click on the link below. Make sure you put Kevin in the promo code and you'll get a 20% discount. What's going on, America? Kevin from Kevin's Corner, where I try to make sense out of nonsense. And did y'all see Lindsey Graham's face? That whole look on his face was showing me that he wasn't able to make sense out of all of this nonsense. That's the face that you have when you're thinking to yourself, how the heck did anybody ever vote for these Democrats? So with that being said, I'm not even going to have to talk or narrate throughout this video. Uh, I'm going to let the video speak for itself. And at the end of it, if you send this to someone like your you know, Democratic colleagues and friends and never Trumpers, I want them to see just how ridiculous, how stupid, how romper runish, how re just completely out there in far left field, the Democrat Party is. And at the end of it, hopefully they'll be saying the same thing. How the heck did I ever vote Democrat? Not once, but twice. You use the term sexual preference to describe those in the LGBTQ community. And let me make clear, sexual preference is an offensive and outdated term. It is used by anti-LGBTQ activists to suggest that sexual orientation is a choice. It is not. Sexual orientation is a key part of a person's identity. So follow the reasoning, if you will. According to Maisie Hirono, you can choose your gender at will because there's an infinite number of genders to choose from. But you have absolutely no say in who you find attractive and suggesting otherwise is just offensive. Sexual preferences are fixed in stone, bigot. And by the way, put on your mask. This message has been brought to you by the Party of Science. Since you became a legal adult, have you ever made unwanted requests for sexual favors or committed any verbal or physical harassment or assault of a sexual nature? No, Senator Hirono. Have you ever faced discipline or entered into a settlement related to this kind of conduct? No, Senator. You're killing me, Smalls. Our president has also been asked whether he'll commit to a peaceful transition if he loses the election. He's been asked directly and repeatedly. And instead of responding in the way we'd expect of any leader of the free world, with a clear and simple yes, he's tried to sow confusion and distrust in the potential results. So, Your Honor, I'm concerned that what President Trump wants here couldn't be clear. That he's trying to rush this nomination ahead so you might cast a decision, a vote, in his favor in the event of a disputed election. And he's doing his level best to cast doubt on the legitimacy of an election in which literally millions of votes have already been cast, most of them by mail. I was very encouraged, again, to hear from you specifically. You have not had any conversation with him about this topic, and that's not what I'm suggesting. In fact, you repeated promptly, 28 U.S.C. 455, you're quite familiar with the recusal statute and its considerations. But I think the gravamen, the core, the, the core issue in recusal is that any judge or justice should recuse themselves from a case in which their impartiality might reasonably be questioned. Given what President Trump said, given the rushed context of this confirmation, will you commit to recusing yourself from any case arising from a dispute in the presidential election results three weeks from now? Does the Constitution give the President of the United States the authority to unilaterally delay a general election under any circumstances? Does federal law? If I give off-the-cuff answers, then I would be basically a legal pundit, and I don't think we want 
judges to be legal pundits. I think we want judges to approach cases thoughtfully. And Is Roe a super precedent? How would you define super precedent? I actually, I might have thought someday I'd be sitting in that chair. I'm not. I'm up here, so I'm asking okay, you. Okay, well, people use super precedent differently. Okay. But I, I want to just ask you very simply, and I, I imagine you'll give me a very short, resolute answer. Um, but you condemn white supremacy, correct? Yes. You're killing me, Smalls. Thank you. I'm glad to see that you said that. I wish our president uh, would say that so resolutely and unequivocally as well. I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. Thank you. I'm glad to see that you said that. I wish our president uh, would say that so resolutely and unequivocally as well. And I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists because they should be condemned totally. Thank you. I'm glad to see that you said that. I wish our president uh, would say that so resolutely and unequivocally as well. I've rejected David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. From the time I'm five years old, I rejected them. Thank you. I'm glad to see that you said that. I wish our president uh, would say that so resolutely and unequivocally as well. You're killing me, Smalls. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the video speaks for itself. Hilarious. That face that Lindsey Graham has, I think that might become like my, um, I don't know, maybe my, my profile picture or something. I mean, that right there sums it all up. That's how every single conservative thinks when they watch these clowns and buffoons on TV. I, I really just, I, I marvel. I be thought, like, if somebody voted for them? I mean, to tell me. Somebody went in there and clicked Mad Maxine. Somebody clicked on Federico with the big old rodeo hat. Somebody went and voted for Hank Johnson. Are you kidding me? Somebody actually voted for Bag of Bones, Mush Mouth, Monkey Paw, Hands, Nancy Pelosi. What are you thinking? Anyway, so thanks, Lindsay. I mean, that man made my day. And the funny part, how you know it was really like deep down on the inside, because you can always tell what somebody's thinking when they don't know somebody's watching them. That look on their face is not disguised. It's pure. And Lindsay was looking like, do you hear this bull crap? Had to close the eyes at the end. Y'all like, beautifully done, Lindsay. Beautifully. Even though he didn't know he was doing it. Beautifully done. My hat goes off to you, pal. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, and the notification button. Find me every Wednesday night live in Kevin's Corner on Facebook, YouTube, um, and my radio blog talk show. Links are below. And check out Extreme Tees, my sponsor. If you like what you see, click on the link below. Put Kevin in the promo code. You'll get a 20% discount. And if you want to donate to Kevin and Kevin's Corner, feel free. There's a link below the video to do that as well. And check out KCUncensored.com. The link's below. You'll be able to see all of my archive videos back when I was a whippersnapper just starting out in this whole commentary thing. And um, yeah, and some new ones where I don't have to worry about saying things to, you know, hurt people on the inside. I know how liberals are sensitive. Anyway, so God bless. See y'all next time in Kevin's Corner. Take care. Have a great evening and God bless America. Take care.